is that when you look at the legal record, that laws did not reference people um, of European descent with low levels of mel melanin as white people until the latter part of the 17th century, and that it took place in colonial North America. So Interesting. So there, of course, were people with low levels of melanin, but they were not conceived of as white, they didn't understand themselves as white, and they were not labeled white in law. They, really? The legal record refers to um, them in the British colonies as English and other freeborns, um, English and other Christians, or um, especially in the criminal record, they simply made reference to someone's nation of origin, the Dutchman, the Irish woman. For wow, I didn't know that. So how did this all come to be? Was there was there a reason that this materialized? Or what Absolutely. was the, the specific reason as to why? This, I imagine this is just the 1% or the select few decided to create the, the word white or categorize or compartmentalize people into certain groups. Well, of course, those with um, in the position of power to influence such a thing um, were, of course, the primary players there. But there, we have to actually take a step back Perfect. before that'll make sense. Perfect, yes. Can you walk us through sure. that? What, what we know, how everything played out? What we know is that, um, and, and I'll focus us in on the colonies of Maryland and Virginia. Done. What we know is that um, for the first three quarters of the 1600s, there was a, um, a population boom in England, and so there were lots of poor people. Um, the primary economy in Maryland and Virginia was tobacco farming, and so they um, had a large plantations, had a regular need to replenish their labor supply. Sure. Um, and so England had lots of poor people, and the king was happy to have them tossed in the guts of a ship and sent over to work. Um, so they came as indentured laborers via a term of indenture. It was typically for five to 14 years. And before you go any further, would you be able to give everybody back home uh, a brief synopsis or a definition of what the difference is between an indentured servant is and um, Enslaved. enslavement? Absolutely. Exactly. Sure. Some, I think there's a big misconception oh. in regards to what that is exactly. Yeah. Well, there's a huge difference between the two. Sure. Uh, those who came via a term of indenture um, uh, indenture itself was protected within parameters of British law. Sure. Um, you couldn't treat um, indentured servants any way you wanted. There, there were limitations to how they could be treated. There were protections for them. Although it is noteworthy that the indentured servants in North America were treated much worse than indentured servants in England. For example, sure. in, in England, indentured servants could marry because they saw that as the way to produce the next generation of indentured servants. Not true in North America. And if a woman were unfortunate enough to become pregnant, they added nine years oh. to her term of indenture and one to the man's. Oh. So, so Women always so, had it bad. It seems like true. women have always had it bad. It's true. Well, we could talk about that in a minute. That's yes. another whole story. Right, right, right. But that played a role in this. So, so a term of indenture was for a limited number of years. Sure. Um, enslavement, and we do know that the first persons of African descent were claimed as slaves by the shipholder, and that was up for debate when I wrote that book. Right. Yeah. The um, in academia for decades there was this dispute about whether the the first. I've read that most historians are they're not really sure they can't put their finger on. Well, now we can because right. the ship manifest was found in Portugal was just it? a few years ago. What, what so was deciphered? Would you be they able to tell claimed us that? that they were the the ship captain claimed them as enslaved. Okay, so, so they were so enslaved. Was, so so comparing enslavement to indenture uh, is a very different thing. In, um, slavery was neither prohibited nor protected um, by international law or British law, and um, slavery was for life. So a really big difference between those two statuses. But here's what's pretty extraordinary, and as I speak to people around the globe about this history, everyone really is shocked to learn mm -hmm. that while that difference is a huge one, those who worked on the same plantation, whether from Africa or from England, were treated the same. Really? For the first three quarters of the 1600s. Yeah, they were treated the same on the same plantation. The, there were divisions, but it was along gender lines. I don't even think we have that type of uh, society. I mean, dare I say now? It's, I mean, would that be a far reach that everybody's like kind of Not, treated the same? We know, we are much more familiar uh, with the society that was created right. through the invention of white people right. than we are to what existed before it. Sure. For sure. So they were treated the same. So that's, right. most people do not know that. I certainly didn't know I that. I didn't either. 
Um, the other thing that's um, surprising to folks is that free people of African descent were not uncommon during that time. And so people are like, wait, you came in slaves, slavery is for life, how can that happen? The historical record reveals that uh, many were able to purchase their own freedom through side jobs. Mm -hmm. um, because many came, many of the first people of African descent came from Barbados, which was already a British colony. They spoke English. They were acclimated to the weather, um, and they were accustomed to the grueling work of sugarcane farming, which is even more arduous than tobacco right. farming. So they had many skills. Compare that person to a person off the streets of London. Right. You know, right. <laughs> not acclimated. Right. Don't have many skills. Don't really want to work. Right. Um, so. So that person had many skills and was able to accumulate resources to purchase their freedom, um, that of family members and loved ones. Number one route to freedom. The other thing that we see in the historical record is that some large plantation owners in their, uh, via a will or trust, freed um, those who they enslaved. I see. Yeah. And, and here's the really important piece of information. Yes. Free men of African descent had the same the same rights and privileges as a free British man by law. Is that right? So, so what did that mean? That meant that free men of African descent could vote, and they did. They could own enslaved Africans, some did. They could own European indentured servants, they did. They could run for public office. Uh, they had the same rights and privileges as a free British man. 